versatile, they are dedicated. They are true professionals. They're New Zealand firefighters. Whether volunteers or career firefighters, they're prepared to put their lives on the line day in, day out. To find out what this extraordinary life is like, our cameras are with them 24-7 as they answer emergency calls. This week we follow the career firefighters of Manukau's Green Watch. Pride Sean. Dismissed. Senior station officer Shane Howe begins the all-important gear check at the start of the shift. These are carried out at the beginning of the shift um, in the morning and the, uh, the shift at night. The purpose of it is to check the equipment, make sure that it's working, so if we get a job, um, things are going to go right. What I'm doing at the moment is checking the, uh, the breathing apparatus. It has to work properly if we're going to a fire. We don't normally do this um, every night, but we're going to uh, just check the, uh, the life call cell. It's called a DSU. Um, we uh, operate this if we get into difficulty, if we find a patient and we need a hand. It's um, quite noisy. Uh, if a fireman hears this, he drops what he's doing and he goes to where the sound is and does uh, and assists. And I <laughs> go off. Yes, and now it's gone off. The main thing is it's working. Did you take the magnet out? Hey. <laughs> In the kitchen, Doug Pierce is a highly popular Green Watch member because of his cooking skills. Doug's a former pastry chef and he ends up cooking twice as often as the other firefighters. What are we having tonight, Jamie? Uh, uh, tonight, uh, we're going to have a little bit of buttered chicken tonight. Buttered chicken? Yeah. Are you using Pam's ingredients like yes, you Yes, old Pam's, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I only stick with Pam's. <laughs> Can you do a little bit of a demonstration with the oil and salt? Oh, I've got it. Oh, it in. have to juggle it, is it? Yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> We've got it here. It all happens here first at Manukau. Uh, this is the kitchen. Um, over here we've got uh, Dougie. He's driving the, uh, the truck tonight. He's our chauffeur. And um, this is the reason why we all have to go into the gym to try and lose some weight. Doug doesn't know it yet, but if I ever get transferred, he's coming with me and the rest of them can starve. So, yeah, dinner. The watch is on call for a four-day stretch. If the siren sounds during dinner, they have a fail-safe fire prevention system for the kitchen. It's all on a um, isolation switch, so everything in the whole kitchen turns off and a um, little um, button over there resets everything when you come back again. Doug's curry kitchen is now serving butter chicken, so make your way to the mess. If they get too fussy, I think me and Steve just will stop cooking for them. So, so there's, a, uh, there's a limit to how much shit they can give us, you know. So, um, and I think that's about it, and I think they all know that. So. This new chutney, is it hot? No. Okay. No, the food. Oh, food's great. Food's always great. Doug, thanks for dinner. Thanks, Benji. I really needed that. <laughs> By the way, Benji doesn't normally do the dishes, uh, whereas I'm Cut here all night. Cut that out. Uh, and you can tell he doesn't because he's blushing. Hey. <laughs> you took some shit. What? <laughs> Well, after a certain hour, we're allowed to uh, knock off once we've had our dinner and tidy it up. And uh, generally, when it starts getting a little bit late, guys start heading off towards their beds, uh, ready for the, the night calls. So most guys go to bed, have a bit of a read, and uh, settle in for the night. And as long as there's no fire calls, they can uh, have a good sleep. One of the cardinal sins is mission, missing the fire engine. It would never happen. The, the crew would always come back for you, but it's always in the back of your mind. 
Sometimes when guys have had really hard nights um, on their second night shifts, um, some of the guys have slept through, but it's just a matter of running back upstairs and booting in the door and jumping on the guy and dragging him out of bed. Now, if you've ever done that once, you never ever do it again. <laughs> There's no sleeping through tonight. Gary and the crew have just gone to bed when the first call comes in. Even though it's a suspected false alarm, the whole crew must attend as the fire service treat every call as the real thing. Okay, we're going to a, uh, a privately monitored uh, smoke alarm activation in Benina Place. Oh, did you say it was on the right? Yeah, second, second on, on the right, right mate. Right. Second is one, two, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so one, mate. Yeah. At least yeah. they've put some new streets there. Yeah. Oh, there's a place to be. Yeah. Oh, it's a party. Party. Hey, bro. Hey. Three, four, six. Uh, 14. <laughs> <laughs> I smell cooking. A roast. Hi, mate. Yeah, mate. We've been cooking. Yep. Did your smoke alarm go off? At least it worked. Push the number and just clear. Cool, mate. Yeah. Didn't realise you caught that. Uh, <laughs> nice bit of fish you caught today, was it? <laughs> no, we haven't no, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, I saw the water around the boat. Yeah, I thought yeah. you might have been out for a fish. With privately monitored smoke alarms, the calls turn out to be false alarms 98% of the time. But fire service policy is that every call must be attended. <laughs> All right, pal. Have a, uh, have a good night, eh? You too. Enjoy your yeah. meal. Enjoy yeah, your mate. roast. Yep. This smoke alarm was triggered by cooking fumes. The fire service recommends you don't have smoke detectors in your kitchen, but nearby. The one thing that I'd say to, to people is if you have any doubt, give us a call. I mean, we're here 24 hours a day. That's what we're here for. If you want help, phone us. We'll come and help you. Shane's soon taken up on his word. It doesn't take long for the siren to sound again. Multiple calls have come into the communication centre, which almost certainly means this time it's the real thing. There's a fire on. Shane Howe and his career firefighters on Manukau Greenwatch are heading to a vehicle on fire in South Auckland. Yeah, right. yeah just mate, just. I've been doing some studies so I thought I'd take a break from it because I just wasn't soaking in. I was having a little bit of a break, a bit of a drink, watch the TV and uh, we got the call. Most of the other guys were in bed, they look a bit uh, sleepy eyed, but I'm wide awake. Right, we've just um, been turned out to uh, a van on fire in uh, Lambie Drive. Since I'm the branchman number one, I've got to get my uh, full BA set ready to go in case there's a lot of smoke so I don't get myself into any trouble with the uh, smoke or anything like that, toxic fumes. BA is the breathing apparatus used by firefighters. Where's the smoke blowing? Oh, yeah, I'll just do it here. Yeah. Manukau crews attend one car fire a week on average. Half of them are deliberately lit. Well, we've got a car that's, um, or a van that's been well involved in fire. Sometimes we come across vehicles that have got um, LPG uh, cylinders in them. They can cause a bit of a problem. And uh, pressurised petrol tanks if the, uh, if the fuel line breaks. Uh, still on fire underneath the bonnet here, so we're just trying to get into it. The machine is just trying to force its way into the motor compartment. Unfortunately, it's all too common. Um, usually, it's some really nice cars, like the uh, most common ones are Sabara, Frezias, that sort of thing. People like the mag wheels on them, the stereos in them. 
or whatever, so they'll steal the car, take what they want, and then they'll end up burning it just to get rid of all the evidence. All we've got to do now is try and find out how the fire started, but I don't think I'm going to have much luck finding stuff here. If you hear a muffled scream, don't panic. I've probably fallen down a deep hole or something. What the hell is that? The burn pattern on the grass shows this fire was definitely no accident. It's been started from here and there's been fuel put in there and through. It's very unusual that you have a burn pattern like this. This is quite remote from where the fire was. This sort of thing annoys me for a number of reasons. One is I've got a rescue tender tied up at a vehicle fire. The other thing is it's a waste of resources. You know, we shouldn't have to come to stuff like this. There's another crew on duty and they haven't had a call out all night, so Shane deliberately sets off the alarm. Hi, Stevie. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> no, 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 wait, the sounds have come down. <laughs> you look. Oh, I better tell the DT crew, eh? Were you all on the truck? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, sorry. Sorry. that's sorry. right there down the book is a malicious <laughs> call. <laughs> Get behind the arms. Anybody thought of cleaning the bloody ovens? Breakfast for Greenwatch is whatever's left in the fridge. Oh, I think they call that sod's law, eh? You normally just get it on the plate and then you get a call and uh, you get the uh, the added bonus of eating it either cold or lukewarm when you get back. So we'll see if the gods are going to be kind to us today, eh? They're not. Breakfast can wait. A uh, quarter house fire, um, us and Pepper Tree, down uh, Lennon Park. House fires claimed the lives of 19 New Zealanders last year. One of those fatalities was in Greenwatch's patch, a little boy aged three who died of smoke inhalation and burns before the firefighters could get to him. Got a job. Multiple calls. Pretty soon the radio tells them the job is genuine and it's all on. The career firefighters of Manukau Greenwatch are attending a house fire in South Auckland. Oh, smell something. You smell it, They're not sure if there's anyone in the house. Manukau district averages one house fire a day. So this team is kept on its toes. It never amazes me, hey, how people can't see a 13-ton fire engine. Yeah, see the man waving over there. We got it. All right, let's bang a gun into it, boys. No, just down in. Down the alleyway or this one? This one here. All right. Hi, mate. Yes, well involved in the bank. Yeah. We've got to pull a light through the house. Yeah. There's a possibility we're going to have to get the police on this one because there's definitely nobody on it. Okay, that's cool. A man working across the road has sprung into action using a garden hose, but it's going to need more grunt than that. At this stage, they still don't know if anyone's inside or not. Yeah.
Sean, just go away and start doing a search, will you? Mate, can I have a, just another crew in there? I want to start to do a search. It looks like everybody's out, but I just want to make sure. Go with your man. I want you inside the building. Three or seven. Three, four, one. Yeah, can you put a message in? House one involved in fire. I've got two crews in at the moment with one high pressure delivery. Uh, one crew has hit the fire, the other crew's going in and doing a search. I'm just waiting for my third pump to come through now. It's all clear, is it? All right, let's open up some windows, eh? The search confirms there's no one inside. The job for the firefighters now is to dampen down any hot spots that could flare up again. Feel how warm it still is? It looks like it, it's a family with, with children. Um, and I'm not too sure whether they're married or not, but it, it is a family home. Family home. Worst case scenario, somebody could have been home and, um, you know, either been burned, overcome by smoke or, or uh, had died. The fire service credits smoke alarms for saving many lives in New Zealand each year but they have to be installed properly to work. So that smoke alarm there isn't damaged. And if you look at the ceiling there, that's where the smoke alarm was supposed to be. It's damaged up there, and this isn't working. In this case, the house was saved by quick-thinking neighbours. So what I did just rang up the, the fire department, or whatever you call it, there. Oh, all I saw at the time, because I was, I was still half asleep, there's smoke going up from the kitchen. Oh, holy shit, man. It's got to go. It's got to get worse. Those, these things like this, are, you know, it's three to five minutes, and you're getting a, a pretty big fire now, so apart from the neighbours spotting it, it's sometimes, you know, this can be three, four minutes, and it's that size. It's just so fast. First went in, there was um, flame showing just inside the door, so while Doug put his uh, BA set on, I just quickly knocked that. Then we went in, it was obviously very dark, uh, smoky. Went down the bedrooms to search, um, the bedrooms on the right hand side, doors were open, so they smoky. Everything on the left hand side, the doors were shut, um, so they had just a quick open, have a look, nothing in there you could see. But otherwise it was pretty hot in there and uh, pretty smoky, so definitely they couldn't have breathed in there, so they would have been unconscious, you know, that's why we always go have a search. It's been pretty hot in here. Yeah, you need to. Yeah. You're on fire. <laughs> Einstein is so lucky that you weren't around when he was born, fella. Hey? We're trying to get hold of the, um, the owner of the property now so that we can talk with her. And I believe that she's also pregnant, so this might be a bit of a shock for the poor girl. We've just got to do as best as we can to try and make the, the mess that there is in there look as presentable as it can to her to try and uh, limit the, uh, the shock. By the time we've cleaned it up and tied it up, it won't be quite as bad. You're the tenant, are you, love? Hi, how are you? I'm Shane. Um, <laughs> We're going to need to have a little chat with you in a minute. Is that OK? Hey? When did, when did you go out, love? When did, you, when did you go out? I left my husband about 11 o'clock to take my mum to the hospital. Yeah. And then I, I come back to... Um, How long were you here beforehand? I before just we... came up and picked up my mum's medicine was here and then we, we, we um, on my way to the shop. OK, so you were here for a very, very short time? Yeah. Okay, fine. She's been off seeing her mum in hospital and she's come back to her house that's um, been damaged by fire. So she's very, very upset. Um, obviously very, very tearful, which is understandable. Some people lose everything that they have. And, um, you know, you can't get away from the, the sadness of that. Do you, um, do you want to come in and have a look? Sure. And I'll show you around. If we go around through the back way, okay, there's a bit of glass up there. I don't want you to cut your feet, eh? What we'll do, we'll start here first, okay? If you're coming through here, okay, the, the door's been closed here, so there are some things that, that you can still use, all right? You've got your TV and bits and pieces here, your mattress, your iron, 
and probably your clothes all in here, okay? okay. So if you if you iron if you wash those, okay, they'll come up and they'll be clean. Alright? Okay. In the bedroom here, there's a bit of smoke damage in here, but the same thing. Okay. You've got your TV, you'll be able to wash your clothes, and if you wash it two or three times, your clothes should be fine. Same with all of your, you know, your um bedding and stuff yeah. like that. Coming on down through here. Okay, this is obviously the area where the most damage is, is done, okay? Um, your table and your chairs, well, you know, you may be able to salvage your chairs and get them recovered, get the table fixed up. Your cabinet over there, it looks a bit dirty, but you get that cleaned up, it'll be fine, okay? okay. Um, your lounge suite and everything, well, that, that's, that's gone. That's all, all burnt and, and the like. Okay. Okay? So... Really, that's, that's about it, love. That there's anything salvageable at all is partly thanks to the man working over the road who attacked the flames early with a garden hose. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, it wasn't nothing, eh? Hey? As long as there was nobody in there. That was amazing. Eh? Nobody home? No. Lucky. Just grab the hose and just put it to the... Try to um, put the fire out. But... I don't think people realise it's, it's a very, very easy thing to sit down and look at TV and watch a video and a movie where people have these accidents. But unless you're actually there, you don't really understand the full implications of it. And that's something that people that are in the emergency services deal with all the time. Shane's handled a delicate situation well. Shane's really good. I mean, um, I wouldn't have asked for um, a better boss um, offhand. I think he's just keeps people nice and relaxed and he's there and he's just telling people what to do and there's just never seems to be a panic or a hassle. Next week on Firefighters, Scruffy the Butcher makes his debut as an officer in charge of the Thames Volunteers. And Mike Olaf and the Coromandel Volunteers battle to save a pregnant woman whose car has plunged 140 metres down a cliff. Here.